Welcome back to Lost Ash Channel. My name is Anton Vjeltsen. I'm a criminal defense attorney in the Southern District of California here in San Diego. A few weeks ago, I finished off a nine-part series dealing with conspiracy law. In one of those videos, I discussed a buyer-seller relationship as a defense to a conspiracy to distribute narcotics, meaning that the person didn't distribute narcotics, they were simply purchasing the narcotics for personal use. A few days ago, another case dropped in the Ninth Circuit that deals with this topic. So let's go ahead and discuss buyer-seller relationship as a defense to conspiracy to distribute narcotics. In this video, we're discussing United States versus McIntosh and DeVault. And this is a Ninth Circuit case from March 2022, this year. In this case, Mr. McIntosh and DeVault were convicted after a jury trial of conspiracy to distribute methamphetamine and heroin in Sentinella State Prison. The sections are 21 U.S.C. 846 and 841A. If you've been watching this channel for a while, you should now be familiar with these two statutes. We see them over and over again as I discuss these drug cases. Now, Mr. DeVault separately was also convicted of possession of heroin and methamphetamine with intent to distribute under section 21 USC 841A and 846B1A and 18 USC section two. Now, Mr. McIntosh received a 92-month sentence and DeVault 188 months. They both appeal their sentences and they go to the Ninth Circuit. Mr. McIntosh argues that he should have never been convicted of the conspiracy to distribute narcotics because he was simply buying narcotics and using them personally. He was never reselling them. But that's not what the Court of Appeals concludes. Again, remember, once we're in the Ninth Circuit, we're in the Court of Appeals. The Court of Appeals has to look at the facts and the jury's conclusion and look at the facts most favorable to the prosecution. And when we look at the facts, Mr. McIntosh joined the drug trafficking conspiracy with intent to distribute rather than simply purchasing drugs for personal use. And how do we know that? Well, the Ninth Circuit looks at three factors. There are text messages and phone calls between McIntosh and DeVault where they use the terms black and heroin interchangeably. McIntosh agreed to purchase $2,500 worth of black from DeVault, which is the amount inconsistent with personal use. Again, the prosecution can use the amounts of money and the weight of the drugs to prove up a conspiracy to distribute rather than personal use. Because at some point, the amount of drugs is just too large for us as reasonable jurors to look and conclude that this was personal use. So in this case, the jury concluded that this was in fact a distribution of narcotics. And the final factor is McIntosh referred to little pay he was receiving from DeVault for reselling the drugs. Again, there shouldn't be any text messages talking about the little pay or how much the person buying the drugs is receiving. After all, if we're going after a defense as a buyer-seller relationship, there shouldn't be any talks about reselling the drugs. And here we have that. Based on these three factors, the Ninth Circuit concludes that he was correctly convicted, properly convicted, of conspiracy to distribute narcotics, namely methamphetamine and heroin. Now, DeVault makes another argument, a little bit different. He essentially says that the federal sentence that he received was improper. He says that the district court sentence him to 188 months consecutive rather than concurrent with his state conviction, state sentence. 
Now, consecutive means that once you complete one sentence, the next one will follow consecutively. When we're talking about concurrent, that means that the judge essentially puts one sentence on top of another, so you don't get extra time. Whatever sentence you received on the first sentence, let's say a state sentence, the next one's concurrent. It runs at the same time, unless, of course, one is longer than the other. And of course, there could be some extra time. Here, the district court never explicitly said why the judge was sentencing uh, Mr. DeVault to a consecutive sentence. And so the Court of Appeals says that it would be better for district court to explicitly address the reasons. But we can infer them from the PSR, the pre-sentence report, and from the record as a whole. Remember, before anyone gets sentenced in federal court, a pre-sentence report gets completed. This is where the probation comes in and interviews my client. They talk about their past, their medical history, employment history, criminal history, drug usage, and so on. And of course, this interview is voluntary. Your attorney should be there next to you. And really, your attorney should try to have the PSR completed to the best of ability of the uh, interviewer, the probation officer. But of course, we're trying to get good facts. And so because it's voluntary, many times I don't allow my clients to talk about their drug usage or criminal history. I simply ask the probation officers to run that criminal history from the record instead of discussing it. And here, Mr. DeVault was already serving a life sentence in state prison. So unless we do a consecutive sentence, he's not getting any additional punishment. It wouldn't make any sense for the district court to run the federal sentence concurrently. And so when we look at the record, the Ninth Circuit says that it makes sense that the district court gave a consecutive sentence. I hope you now understand a little bit more about the buyer-seller relationship as a defense to conspiracy to distribute narcotics. In this case, you see how it doesn't always work. And then, of course, in the cases prior that I've discussed on this channel, I gave you the cases where it did work. So here's what I need you to do now. Now that you're about to finish this video, go back and watch the nine-part series dealing with conspiracy law. I discuss all of these concepts in one series. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please click like, subscribe, hit that bell notification button, so next time I post, you'll be first to know.